Insurgency in Balochistan, Wikipedia article audio Pakistan Iran Area of Dispute History Balush Separatist Groups Supported by Iraq, India, Soviet Union, Democratic Republic of Afghanistan Sectarian Groups Jund Allah, Jayish ul Adl, Jund Allah, Al Qaeda, Lushkari Yahangvi, Sipa e Sahaba. Karim Khan, Nowroz Khan, Kerbak Share Mary A Euro, Balach Mary A Euro, Braham Dok Bugdi, Alan Azar Balash, Javed Mengal. Pakistan Background Blah 10,000. The insurgency in Balochistan is a guerrilla war waged by Balush nationalists against the governments of Pakistan and Iran in the Balochistan region, which covers Balochistan province in southwestern Pakistan, Sistan, and Balochistan province in southeastern Iran, and the Balochistan region of southern Afghanistan. Rich in natural resources like natural gas, oil, coal, copper, sulfur, fluoride, and gold, this is the least developed province in Pakistan. Armed groups demand greater control of the province's natural resources and political autonomy. Bullish separatists have attacked civilians from other ethnicities in the province. In the 2010s, Attacks against the Shia community by sectarian groups A Euro though not always directly related to the political struggle E Euro have risen, contributing to tensions in Balochistan. First Conflict In Pakistan's Balochistan province, insurgencies by Balush nationalists have been fought in 1948, 1958 A Euro 59. 1962 A Euro 63 and 1973 A Euro 77, with an ongoing and reportedly stronger, broader insurgency beginning in 2003. This insurgency has begun to weaken. In an article titled The End of Pakistan's Balush Insurgency Balush analyst Malik Siraj Akbar reported that Balush militants began killing their own commanders. However, Akbar called anger towards Chief Minister Abdul Malik Balush growing and often uncontrollable. Balush militants have taken some reconciliation offers from the government and offered to hand in their weapons. In April 2016, four militant commanders and 144 militants had surrendered under reconciliation. 600 rebels were killed and 1,025 surrendered after accepting reconciliation as of August 2016. In April 2017, another 500 Balush rebels surrendered to the state, including members of BRA, UBA, and LEB. Balush separatists argue they are economically marginalist and poor compared to the rest of Pakistan. Being crucial for Pakistan's economic future, China has invested $46 billion in the region. The Balochistan Liberation Army, designated as a terrorist organization by Pakistan and Britain, is the most widely known Balush separatist group. Since 2000 it has conducted numerous deadly attacks on Pakistani troops, police, and civilians. Other separatist groups include Lushkari Balashistan and the Balush Liberation United Front. In 2005, a rebellion by Balush against the Islamic Republic of Iran began. The fight over the IRI Balush region bordering Pakistan has not gained as much ground as the conflict in Pakistan. Human rights activists have accused nationalist militants and the government of Pakistan of human rights abuses. Second Conflict Bullish militants have targeted minority communities such as Hazara Shia on the basis of their religious beliefs. 
This intercommunal violence led to Hazara refusing to bury their dead and demanding that the Pakistani government deploy even more troops for their protection. The governor took charge and accused security forces of being too scared or clueless to act, according to the BBC. Bullish militant groups, who have pledged allegiance to ISIS, have also targeted moderate Sunnis who follow Sufi teachings. A recent attack on Sufis in Balochistan was the attack on the shrine of Shah Nurani in which 52 people, including women and children, were killed. Iranian intelligence has also cooperated and investigated cases with Pakistani intelligence over the involvement of India's raw agency in the Balochistan region administered by the two nations, including the case of Kulbushan Jadhav. Third conflict the News International reported in 2012 that a Gallup survey conducted for DFID revealed that the majority of Bullish do not support independence from Pakistan. Only 37% of Bullish were in favor of independence. Amongst Bullishistan's Pashtun population support for independence was even lower at 12%. However, a majority of Balochistan's population did favor greater provincial autonomy. The government has since taken democratization steps, in 2013 provincial elections were held and a grand alliance of the Pakistan Muslim League and Pashtun and Balish local parties were formed. The Supreme Court ordered local government elections to be held which by 2015 helped to further decentralize policy making for local population regarding health, education, and sanitation. The ruling coalition reaffirmed its mandate in the Balochistan province and won the majority. Fourth Conflict 1973A Euro 77 Historical Balochistan covers the southern part of Sistan o Balochistan province, Iran, in the west, the Pakistani province of Balochistan in the east, and, in the northwest, Afghanistan's Helmand province. The Gulf of Oman forms its southern border. Mountains and desert make up much of the region's terrain. Most Balochis live in part that falls within Pakistan's borders. Geographically, Balochistan province is the largest region of Pakistan, but it is the least inhabited, with only 5% of total population, and the least developed. Sunni Islam is the predominant religion. Fifth Conflict 2004 A Euro to date. Stuart Notholt in his Atlas of Ethnic Conflict, describes the unrest in Balochistan as a nationalist-slash-self-determination conflict. The Balish nationalist struggle is centered on the Khanate of Kalat, established in 1666 by Mir Ahmed. Under Mir Nasir Khan I in 1758, who accepted the Afghan paramountcy, the boundaries of Kalat stretched up to Dara Ghazi Khan in the east and Bandar Abbas in the west. However, in November 1839, the British invaded Kalat and killed the Khan and his followers. Afterwards, the British influence in the region gradually grew. In 1869, the British political agent Robert Sandeman ended up mediating a dispute between the Khan of Kalat and the Sardars of Balochistan, and established the British primacy in the region. The tribal areas of Mary, Bugdi, Kitran, and Chagi were brought under the direct administration of a British agent, eventually to become the chief commissioner's province of Balochistan. Laspala and Karen were declared special areas with a different political system. The remaining areas of Sarawan, Yahilawan, Kaki, and Makran were retained as the Khanate of Kalat, supervised by a political agent of Kalat. In the 20th century, the educated Balish middle class harbored hopes of an independent Balishistan free of the British. 
They formed a nationalist movement Anjumani Itahadibalashistan in 1931. One of their first campaigns was to fight for the accession of Azam Jan as the Khan of Kalat and a constitutional government to be established under him. They were successful in establishing Azam Jan as the Khan but the new Khan sided with the Sardars and turned his back on the Anjuman. His successor Mir Ahmad Yar Khan was more sympathetic to Anjuman but he was averse to upsetting his relations with the British. The Anujaman, transformed into the Kalat State National Party, continued to fight for independence from the British. It was declared illegal by the Khanate in 1939 and its active leaders and activists were exiled. This paved the way for the formation of new political parties. Balashistan Muslim League allied to the Muslim League in June 1939 and Anjuman Iwatan allied to the Indian National Congress in the same year. During British rule Balashistan was under the rule of a chief commissioner and did not have the same status as other provinces of British India. The Muslim League under Muhammad Ali Jinnah in the period 1927-1947 strived to introduce reforms in Balashistan to bring it on par with other provinces of British India. During the Pakistan movement, public opinion in Balashistan at least in Quetta and other small towns, was overwhelmingly in favour of Pakistan. The pro-India Congress, which drew support from Hindus and some Muslims, sensing that geographic and demographic compulsions would not allow the province a Euro trademark's inclusion into the newly independent India, began to encourage separatist elements in Balochistan and other Muslim-majority provinces such as NWFP. Drop in Violence The Khan of Kalat lent great support to the Pakistan movement but also desired to declare independence. Lord Mountbatten, however, made it clear that the princely states with the lapse of British paramountcy would have to join either India or Pakistan keeping in mind their geographic and demographic compulsions. Conflict in Iran On July 19, Mountbatten called a roundtable conference meeting between representatives of the state of Kalat and government of Pakistan. Mountbatten discussed with them the status of the Kalat state. The representatives of Kalat argued that Kalat, as per the Treaty of 1876, was an independent and sovereign state and not an Indian state. Mountbatten accepted this position only for the purpose of negotiation. Thus, Mountbatten confined the topic of discussion to the least areas of Quetta, Nushki, Nasir Abbott, and Bolan. He explained that Pakistan rejected Kalata Euro trademark's claims that these areas should be returned to Kalat. Pakistan Army, Inter-Services Intelligence, Military Intelligence of Pakistan, Frontier Corps Pakistan a Euro trademark's position was that it would inherit all treaty obligations incurred by India to the foreign states. Kalat argued that the leases clearly stated that the other party besides Kalat was the British government alone. Kalat argued that it was a personal agreement and there was no provision that the leases to the British would be inherited by others. Therefore, since the agreement was between Kalat and the British government, Pakistan could not be the latter a Euro trademark's successor party. Pakistan did not agree that the agreement was personal as personal agreements by nature implied that only a particular person was involved. Mountbatten also said that according to international law, treaties such as the one being discussed were inherited by successors and not invalidated by a transfer of power. Mountbatten also suggested that in case there was no agreement the matter could be put before an arbitral tribunal. Imperial Army, IRGC, Border Guard Kalat wished to have further discussions on the matter. 
Kalat also argued that in case of a vote in the least areas between joining Kalat and joining Pakistan then the vote would go in favor of the former. Pakistan did not agree that the vote would have such a result. Attacks by insurgents Drivers of insurgency Economic inequality Development issues Kalat also expressed its deepest desire to remain on friendly terms with Pakistan and stated that it understood that Jinnah, who was anxious for a correct decision, wanted more time to study the issues between Kalat and Pakistan. Mount Batten, however, suggested that Jinnah not be brought into the discussions. Bla, Bra, BLF, Yuba, LEB, Bluff, BSO. Mountbatten insisted that Kalat and Pakistan sign a standstill agreement, which both countries did. The standstill agreement also stipulated that both parties would discuss as soon as possible about their relationship concerning defense and external affairs. According to the Article I, the government of Pakistan agrees that Kalat is an independent state being quite different in status from other states of India. However, the Article 4 stated, A standstill agreement will be made between Pakistan and Kalat by which Pakistan shall stand committed to all the responsibilities agreements signed by Kalat and the British government from 1839 to 1947 and by this, Pakistan shall be the legal, constitutional and political successor of the British. Through this agreement, the British paramountcy was effectively transferred to Pakistan. Pakistan Army, 50,000, Frontier Corps, 50,000. However, without making any agreement with Pakistan and in violation of the standstill agreement the Khan of Kalat declared independence, to Jinnah Euro trademark s shock. After the Indian government refused Kalat a Euro trademark s request for merger with India, the ruler of Kalat unconditionally signed an instrument of accession with Pakistan on March 27, 1948. Contrary to the wishes of his state a Euro trademark s legislature. Balochistan contained a chief commissioner's province and four princely states under the British Raj. The provinces Shahi Jirga and the non-official members of the Quetta municipality opted for Pakistan unanimously on June 29, 1947. Three of the princely states, Macron, Las Bella, and Karen, acceded to Pakistan in 1947 after independence. But the ruler of the fourth princely state, the Khan of Kalat, Ahmad Yar Khan, who used to call Jinnah his father, declared Kalat's independence as this was one of the options given to all of the 535 princely states by British Prime Minister Clement Attlee. Kalat finally acceded to Pakistan on March 27, 1948 after the strange help of All India Radio and a period of negotiations and bureaucratic tactics used by Pakistan. The signing of the instrument of accession by Ahmed Yar Khan, led his brother, Prince Abdul Karim, to revolt against his brother's decision in July 1948. Princes Aga Abdul Karim Balish and Muhammad Rahim, refused to lay down arms, leading the dasht e hilawan in unconventional attacks on the army until 1950. The princes fought a lone battle without support from the rest of Balashistan. Jinnah and his successors allowed Yar Khan to retain his title until the province's dissolution in 1955. Gas Revenue Nawagna Uras Khan took up arms in resistance to the one-unit policy, which decreased government representation for tribal leaders, from 1958 to 1959. He and his followers started a guerrilla war against Pakistan, and were arrested, charged with treason, 
and imprisoned in Hyderabad. Five of his family members, sons and nephews, were subsequently hanged on charges of treason and aiding in the murder of Pakistani troops. Nawagnaguras Khan later died in captivity. Nawagnaguras Khan fought a lone battle as the rest of Balochistan did not support the uprising. After the second conflict, a Balish separatist movement gained momentum in the 1960s, following the introduction of a new constitution in 1956 which limited provincial autonomy and enacted the one-unit concept of political organization in Pakistan. Tension continued to grow amid consistent political disorder and instability at the federal level. The federal government tasked the Pakistan army with building several new bases in key areas of Balochistan. Sher Muhammad Bajrani Mary led like-minded militants into guerrilla warfare from 1963 to 1969 by creating their own insurgent bases, spread out over 45,000 miles of land, from the Mengal tribal area in the south to the Mary and Bugdi tribal areas in the north. Their goal was to force Pakistan to share revenue generated from the Sui gas fields with the tribal leaders. The insurgents bombed railway tracks and ambushed convoys. The army retaliated by destroying vast areas of the Mary tribe's land. This insurgency ended in 1969, with the Bullish separatists agreeing to a ceasefire. In 1970 Pakistani President Yahya Khan abolished the one-unit policy, which led to the recognition of Balochistan as the fourth province of West Pakistan, including all the Balochistani princely states, the High Commissioner's province, and Gwadar, an 800 km to coastal area purchased from Oman by the Pakistani government. The unrest continued into the 1970s, culminating in a government-ordered military operation in the region in 1973. Regional Inequality Gwadar Multiculturalism and Immigration In 1973, citing treason, President Bhutto dismissed the provincial governments of Balochistan and NWFP and imposed martial law in those areas, which led to armed insurgency. Kerbak Sher Mary formed the Balochistan People's Liberation Front, which led large numbers of Mary and Mengal tribesmen into guerrilla warfare against the central government according to some authors. The Pakistani military lost 300 to 400 soldiers during the conflict with the Balashi separatists, while between 7,300 and 9,000 Balashi militants and civilians were killed. Assisted by Iran, Pakistani forces inflicted heavy casualties on the separatists. The insurgency fell into decline after a return to the four-province structure and the abolishment of the Sardari system. In 2004 an insurgent attack on Gwadar port resulting in the deaths of three Chinese engineers and four wounded drew China into the conflict. In 2005, the Baluch political leaders Nawab Akbar Khan Bugdi and Mir Baluch Mary presented a 15-point agenda to the Pakistan government. Their stated demands included greater control of the province's resources and a moratorium on the construction of military bases. On December 15, 2005 the Inspector General of the Frontier Corps, Major General Shujat Zamir Dar, and his deputy brigadier Salim Nawaz were wounded after shots were fired at their helicopter in Balochistan province. The provincial interior secretary later said that, after visiting Kolu, both of them were wounded in the leg but both are in stable condition. However, a 2006 cable from the American embassy in Islamabad leaked by WikiLeaks noted that, a euro or other a seems to be little support in the province, beyond the Bugdi tribe, for the current insurgency a euro. Education Issues 
In August 2006, Nawab Akbar Khan Bugdi, 79 years old, was killed in fighting with the Pakistan Army, in which at least 60 Pakistani soldiers and seven officers were also killed. Pakistan's government had charged him with responsibility of a series of deadly bomb blasts and a rocket attack on President Pervez Musharraf. In April 2009, Balish National Movement President Ghulam Mohammad Balish and two other nationalist leaders were seized from a small legal office and were allegedly handcuffed, blindfolded and hustled into a waiting pickup truck which is in still use of intelligence forces in front of their lawyer and neighboring shopkeepers. The gunmen were allegedly speaking in Persian. Five days later, on April 8, their bullet-riddled bodies were found in a commercial area. The black-claimed Pakistani forces were behind the killings, though international experts have deemed it odd that the Pakistani forces would be careless enough to allow the bodies to be found so easily and light Balochistan on fire if they were truly responsible. The discovery of the bodies sparked rioting and weeks of strikes, demonstrations, and civil resistance in cities and towns around Balochistan. On August 12, 2009, Khan of Kalat Mir Suleiman Dawood declared himself ruler of Balochistan and formally announced a council for independent Balochistan. The council's claimed domain includes Sistan and Balochistan province as well as Pakistani Balochistan, but does not include Afghan Balish regions. The council claimed the allegiance of all separatist leaders including Nawabzada Bram Dok Bugdi. Suleiman Dawood stated that the UK had a moral responsibility to raise the issue of Balochistan's illegal occupation at international level. The Economist writes are supported a euro with money, influence, or sympathy euro by some members of the powerful Bugdi tribe and by parts of the Balish middle class. This makes today's insurgency stronger than previous ones, but the separatists will nevertheless struggle to prevail over Pakistan's huge army. Us based exiled Balish journalist and newspaper editor Malik Siraj Akbar writes that the ongoing Balish resistance has created serious challenges for the Pakistan government, unlike the past resistance movements, because it has lasted longer than previous insurgencies, has greater breadth the euro including the entire province from rural mountainous regions to the city centres involves Balish women and children at regular protest rallies, and has drawn more international attention a Euro including a 2012 hearing by the U.S. Congress. Islamabad has accused its neighbor India of supporting the insurgency in Balochistan. However infighting between insurgent groups as of late 2014 has weakened the movement. Many factors limit the scope of the nationalist insurgency, the Bullish themselves are divided into rival camps and often carry out tribal infighting amongst themselves. Pakistan's ISI often exploits this and brings tribal rivals into the ruling government. Balochistan province itself is of mixed ethnicity, with Bullish being 54% and the rest being Pashtuns and Sindhis who are overwhelmingly Pakistani nationalists, this information can be seen in preliminary findings of 2011 census. Sindhis vote for federalist parties such as Pakistan People's Party of Bhutto Zardari family and Pashtuns historically voted for conservative pro-Pakistan Islamist politicians such as Fazalur Rehman. The Bullish practice Islam are predominantly Sunni and speak Urdu with other ethnic groups such as Pashtuns and Sindhis, cultural traits in common with the rest of Pakistan. Government schools provide Urdu education, Balish militants themselves stand accused of rights abuses, Human Rights Watch published a 40-page report which criticized Balish nationalists of killing, threatening and harassing teachers.
In 2014 there were about 2 million ethnic Polish in Iran. In 1928, the new Pahlava government of Iran was sufficiently well established to turn its attention to Baluchistan. Dust Mohammad Khan Balish refused to submit, trusting in the network of alliances he had built up over the whole of the province south of the Sarayanad. However, as soon as Uriye won fourth A Shah's army under General Amar Amanullah Jahanbani arrived in the area, the alliances dissolved. De Estimo Ayanamid Khan was left with a relatively small force and few allies of any consequence. The Persian army had little difficulty in defeating him. Once again Baluch political unity proved highly brittle. De Estimo Ayanamid eventually surrendered and was pardoned on condition he live in Tehran. After a year, he escaped while on a hunting trip. In due course he was recaptured, and having killed his guard in the escape was hanged for murder. Bullish activists complained that the new governance was centralized and dominated by the Persians, forcing the Bullish community and other minorities to fight to protect their rights. Bullish people in Iran have several grievances. The Shiite Islamic Revolution perceived the predominantly the Sunni Bullish as a threat. Sistani Bulishistan, the province where Bullish have traditionally lived in Iran, has the country's worst rates for life expectancy, adult literacy, primary school enrollment, access to improved water sources and sanitation, infant mortality rate, of any province in Iran. Despite its important natural resources, the province has the lowest per capita income in Iran. Almost 80% of the Bullish live under the poverty line. Military response Foreign support In the early 2000s the radical Islamist group Jund Allah became active in Balochistan. The Al-Qaeda-linked terrorist organization has branches in both Iran and Pakistan. From 2003 to 2012, an estimated 296 people were killed in Jundullah-related violence in Iran. Attacks in Iran included bombings in Zaydan in 2007, which killed 18 people, and another bombing in 2009 that killed 20 people. In 2009, 43 people were killed in a bombing in Pishan. In July 2010, 27 people were killed in bombings in Zaydan. In 2010, a suicide bombing in Chabahar killed 38 people. Among the deaths in the Pishan bombings were two Iranian Revolutionary Guards generals, Nor Ali Shushteri, the deputy commander of the Revolutionary Guards ground forces, and Rajab Ali Mamadzadeh, the Revolutionary Guards Sistan and Baluchistan provincial commander. Afghanistan in 2010 the leader of Jund Allah, Abdalmalek Riji, was killed, causing fragmentation of the group but not an end to insurgent attacks. In October 2013, the group Jayish al-Adl, killed 14 Iranian border guards in an ambush in the town of Rustuk, near the town of Saravan. Shortly thereafter, the Iranian authorities executed 16 Baluchs, on charges ranging from terrorism to drug trafficking. Another group, Harakat Ansar Iran killed two Basaj officers and wounded numerous civilians in a October 2012 suicide bombing against the mosque of Imam Hussein, in the port city of Chabahar. India Iraq Israel Soviet Union U.S. Human Rights Issues Sunni Extremism and Religious Persecution of Zikris Supreme Court Investigation Missing People Found Supreme Court Orders 
Affect of and Remedies for the Insurgency Development Issues 2 Economic Effects and Shortage of Skilled Workers and Goods MPA Personal Development Budget According to analyst Danielle Grassi, Salafism plays an increasingly central role for the post jundala militants of JAA and HAI. The rhetoric of groups such as HAI and JAA uses strongly anti-Shia tones. The two groups often refer to the Iranian Islamic Republic as a safe avid regime, in reference to the safe avid dynasty which introduced Shiism in Iran. Iran is also concerned about anti-Shia cooperation between the two groups and ISIS. Iran has accused America of supporting Jund Allah for years. The U.S. government, which has officially designated Jund Allah a terrorist organization, has denied this charge. Iran has been angered by JAA's use of Pakistani territory as a refuge and has threatened military operations in Pakistan to counter terrorist groups on several occasions. In Balochistan, Pakistan, drivers of insurgency have been economic, cultural, involving immigration and human rights. Economic inequality and Balochistan's status as a neglected province where a majority of population lacks amenities is a dimension in the conflict. Since the mid-1970s Balochistan's share of Pakistan's GDP has dropped from 4.9 to 3.7 percent. Balochistan has the highest infant and maternal mortality rate, the highest poverty rate, and the lowest literacy rate in Pakistan. On the other hand, according to a report published in the Pakistani English language Don newspaper, members of Balochistan's elite society, including provincial government ministers and officials, own pieces of land greater in size than some small towns of the country, and had luxury vehicles, properties, investments, and businesses valued at millions of rupees. Balochistan receives less per slash unit in royalties than Sindh and Punjab provinces, since Balochistan's wellhead price five times lower than in Sindh and Punjab. Furthermore, the government has returned little of the royalties owed to the province, citing the need to recover operating costs. Consequently, Balochistan is heavily in debt. Balochistan province receives Rs 32.71 per unit on gas revenues, including a royalty of Rs 13.90, excise duty of Rs 5.09, and gas development surcharge of Rs 13.72. Many private individuals with gas deposits on their land also receive payments. Many Bullocks argue that such royalties are too low. In response, in 2011 Prime Minister Syed Yusuf Razajilani announced an addition of Rs 120 billion to the gas development surcharge and royalty portion of the Agazi Hakuki Balashistan package. However, royalties often do not trickle down to the common people in Balashistan due to the corruption and wealth hoarding of Balash tribal chiefs. This has hindered the growth of infrastructure. Extensive road and rail links developed by British colonialists in northern parts of Balochistan province have brought greater economic development to areas mainly inhabited by ethnic Pashtuns, which has also heightened nationalism among ethnic Baloks within the province. Another grievance is the construction of the megaport of Gwadar which began in 2002 and is run entirely by the federal government. Bullish complain that construction of the port relies on Chinese engineers and laborers, and few bullocks have been employed. There has been little improvement in living standards for bullocks in the area. A parallel town for workers at Gwadar is being built close to the old one to segregate bullocks from the growing influx of outsiders.
government officials illegally sold much of the land around Gwadar, making massive profits at the expense of local Baluchs. The Pakistani government responded to the Baluchs' increased resentment and resistance to their economic marginalization in Gwadar with a hard-line approach, stationing soldiers in the area to secure it from insurgent attacks. The construction project resulted in the employment of a large number of non baluchs especially Punjabis, even though there is an excess in the number of unemployed Baluch engineers and technicians. Due to the historical shortage of skilled labor in Balochistan, skilled workers are often imported from other regions. Their arrival means new industries can develop, boosting the local economy, however, nationalists argue that this creates resentment amongst the local inhabitants. Like Karachi, which after migration from Balochistan, Central Asia, Iran, East Asia, and especially a large number of people arriving from other areas of Pakistan in search of daily living settled there, it has been a national financial hub in Pakistan, thus the local inhabitants became a minority in the largest city of their province. Nationalists argue against multiculturalism and non Balish immigration. Karachi city has been playing a key role as a financial hub for Pakistan and its economy has exploded to become on the major cities in Asia as a seaport. However, the city continues be a home for ethnic and sectarian violence. Baloch nationalists argue that migration leads to such events, and they are opposed to similar situation in Baluchistan. Mir Suleiman Dawood claims that the people in Balochistan remain deeply resentful of Pakistan's policies in the region and he, apart from other, rather militant, Balochistan nationalist organizations have openly called for India's assistance in Balochistan's separation from Pakistan. On August 12, 2009, Khan of Kalat Mir Suleiman Dawood declared himself ruler of Balochistan and formally made announcement of a council for independent Balochistan. The council's claimed domain includes Balish of Iran, apart from Pakistani Balochistan, but does not include Afghan Balish regions, and the council contains all separatist leaders including Nawabzada Bram Dok Bugdi. After the Soviet invasion, around 4 million refugees from Afghanistan arrived and settled in the region which has resulted in substantial demographic imbalance. Perceived marginalization as a result of increased Pashtun migration from Afghanistan during the Afghan war drives the insurgency. A major factor in the Balakistan conflict is education, which nationalists feel has been neglected. The government of Pakistan recognizes that importing skilled labor from other regions has caused tensions in the region, and has thus sought to encourage scholarships for Balashi students so they can participate in development programs. The quota for Balash students in Punjab University was doubled in 2010 under the Chi Malong scheme, on the order of CM Shabazz Sharif. The provincial governments of Sindh, Punjab, and KP said they would take steps to encourage Balochistan students to enroll and benefit from 100% scholarships. However, nationalists argue that not enough education development is taking place, and that the government has neglected its duty. Many Balochis have not tended to look favorably on Pakistan and the army's intervention in politics as they see the military as dominated by Punjabis and the interests of the Punjabis and lacking Balish representation. In the insurgencies themselves, the military's harsh response has led to a spiral of violence. A report by the Pakistan Security Research Unit notes, Islamabad's militarized approach has led to violence, widespread human rights abuses, mass internal displacement and the deaths of hundreds of civilians and armed personnel. 
According to the International Crisis Group the attempt to crush the insurgency as in earlier insurgencies is feeding bullish disaffection. Moderate bullocks have been alienated from the government by the imprisonment of civilians without charges, and routine kidnapping of dissidents. Pakistan has repeatedly accused India, and occasionally the US, of supporting Baloch rebels, both countries have denied the charge. During 1970s the then Afghan President Mohammad Daoud Khan established militant training camps in Afghanistan for Baloch rebels. These were the first modern training camps in the country. The former Pakistani ambassador to the US, Hussein Haqqani, wrote that in the 1970s training camps were set up in Afghanistan by Daoud to support Baloch separatists in Pakistan. According to a student paper, Pakistan's fear that a communist Afghanistan would embolden the Baloch and Pashtun Marxist separatists in the western Pakistani province of Balochistan was confirmed when Daoud began supporting Marxist Baloch and Pashtun groups in eastern Afghanistan. Daoud Khan was removed from power in Afghanistan in 1978 by a communist coup. In 2012, Pakistani Interior Minister Reman Malik stated that Balish Republican Party Chief Braham Dok Bugdi was operating militant training camps in Afghanistan, which were dismantled only after Islamabad conveyed its knowledge of these camps to Kabul. Malik said that the camps in Afghanistan were responsible for training up to 5,000 insurgents, and that Bugdi had hired three large houses in Kabul. The Pakistani minister claimed that the president of Afghanistan, Hamid Karzai, had accepted that militants based in Afghanistan were fueling terrorism in Balochistan. The Pakistani Tribune wrote that in response to Islamabad's request, Kabul has formally given its assurance stop the infiltration of militants from Kandahar to Balochistan's border district Kaman. Previously, Karzai had always denied that Baloks in Afghanistan were supporting an armed struggle in Balochistan. According to WikiLeaks cables, Karzai said in a 2007 conversation with U.S. officials, that Bugdi had once tried to call Karzai but he had refused for the sake of good relations with Pakistan. Now he cannot forgive himself for refusing. Karzai assessed that Pakistan had troubles with many other tribes too, as a result of its trying to divide and conquer and turn the tribes against each other. Pakistan needed to address the bigger picture, Karzai urged. Bullish leaders such as Bugdi left Afghanistan for Switzerland. Against the backdrop of heavy criticism of Pakistan's paramilitary frontier corps over its alleged role in forced disappearances and human rights violations in Balochistan, the chief of FC troops in Balochistan, Major General Abedullah Khan Kadak, said in June 2012 that over 30 militant camps had been established in Afghanistan and were being used to launch terrorist and anti-state activities in Balochistan. Pakistan's Inter-Services Intelligence Agency has been accused of working with the Afghan Taliban in Balochistan, with the Taliban's leadership council, Quetta Shura, named after the provincial capital Quetta. According to Malik Siraj Akbar, a bullish journalist living in exile, there is a consensus in Pakistan that it can be assumed that India is behind the insurgency in Balochistan and no evidence is required. Pakistan has repeatedly accused India of supporting Balish rebels, starting with an attack in Gwadar in 2004 where three Chinese engineers were killed. On March 29, 2016, Pakistan claimed that it had apprehended a serving Indian naval officer, Kulbushan Yadav who was tasked by research and analysis wing to carry out terrorism in Balochistan, and bomb Chinese nationals in a hotel in Gwadar who were there to work on a deep sea port construction project.
Wright Neville writes that outside Pakistan, some Western observers also believe that India secretly funds the Balochistan Liberation Army. WikiLeaks cables indicate that the British intelligence strongly believes New Delhi supports the Balush insurgency in response to alleged Pakistani support for Lashkari Taiba. Following the 2008 Mumbai attacks, British diplomats feared that intense domestic pressure would force Delhi to ramp up the covert support, an apprehension discounted by the U.S. State Department. The former American AFPAC envoy Richard Holbrook said in 2011 that while Pakistan had repeatedly shared its allegations with Washington, it had failed to provide any evidence to the United States that India was involved in separatist movements in Balochistan. He did not consider Pakistan's accusations against India credible. Holbrook also strongly rejected the allegation that India was using its consulates in Afghanistan to facilitate Balish rebel activity, saying he had no reason to believe Islamabad's charges, and that Pakistan would do well to examine its own internal problems. India has categorically denied the allegations pointing to Pakistan's failure to provide evidence. Braham Dokbugdi stated in a 2008 interview that he would accept aid from India, Afghanistan, and Iran in defending Balochistan. When asked about the alleged link of his group with India, he is reported to have laughed and said, Would our people live amid such miserable conditions if we enjoyed support from India? However, while surrendering to the government, Bra's former spokesman Sarbaz Balish remarked we were misled by Braham Dak Bugdi. We have now come to know that he works for India. Why should we fight in our own country for another country? Balish National Front Secretary Karima Balish claims the allegations against India are an excuse to label ingrown Balishistan freedom movement as a proxy war to cover up the war crimes Pakistani state has committed in Balishistan. In 2016, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi criticised Pakistan and alleged human rights issues in Balishistan during an Independence Day speech. Pakistan condemned Modi's remarks, calling it an attempted diversion from violence in Kashmir and a reiteration of Pakistani allegations vis a vis Indian involvement in Balochistan. Modi's comments were welcomed by exiled Balish separatist leaders but sparked anti India protests by political organizations and locals in Balochistan. The Pakistan government is considering asking the United Nations to take up the matter of foreign involvement. On February 10, 1973, Pakistani police and paramilitary raided the Iraqi embassy in Islamabad, seizing a large cache of small arms, ammunition, grenades and other supplies, which were found in crates marked Foreign Ministry, Baghdad. The ammunition and weaponry was believed to be destined for Balish rebels. Pakistan responded by expelling and declaring persona non grata the Iraqi ambassador Hikmet Suleiman and other consular staff. In a letter to U.S. President Nixon on February 14, Bhutto blamed India and Afghanistan, along with Iraq and the Soviet Union, for involvement in a conspiracy subversive and irredentist elements which seek to disrupt Pakistan's integrity. According to author Mark Perry, CIA memos revealed that in 2007 and 2008 Israeli agents posed as American spies and recruited Pakistani citizens to work for Jund Allah and carried out false flag operations against Iran. The Bullish Society of North America was a Bullish lobbying group founded in 2004 in Washington, D.C. by Dr. Wahid Bullish, a graduate of Bolan Medical College who had gone into self-imposed exile in the United States in 1992. Between 2004 and 2014, 
his group had been trying to gain American support for the independence of Balochistan. He held meetings with several American congressmen and allegedly had meetings with several CIA officials. Dr. Bullish had long claimed that the Pakistani state was committing acts of genocide against the Bullish people, and that Islamabad's aim was to plunder the province's vast mineral resources. In January 2014 he released a letter appealing to the United States and Israel for direct assistance in preventing an alleged killing spree of Bullish people by the Pakistani army. In May 2014, Dr. Bullish disbanded the BSONA, claiming that the War of Independence of Balochistan was actually a war of independence of Khans, Nawabs, and Sardars. He has since formed the Bullish Council of North America, which has dedicated itself to working with all democratic and nationalist forces in Pakistan to secure Bullish rights through democratic, nonviolent means, within the Federation of Pakistan. Syed F. Hasnat alleged that during the Soviet war in Afghanistan, the Soviet Union helped establish the Balochistan Liberation Army which chiefly operates from southern Afghanistan. The U.S. State Department's official policy rejects secessionist forces in the Pakistani part of Balochistan, in support of the country's unity and territorial integrity. The U.S. has however, expressed concerns over human rights issues and urged parties in Pakistan to work out their differences peaceably and through a valid political process. In February 2010 a Jundullah leader captured by Iran, Abdul Malak Riji, alleged on Iranian TV that the U.S. had promised to provide Jundullah with military equipment and a base in Afghanistan near the Iranian border for its fight against Iran. Rigi did not mention assistance in fighting Pakistan. The U.S. has denied links with Jundullah, and according to the BBC, it is not possible to determine whether Abdul Malek Rigi made the statement freely or under duress. In late 2011, the Balochistan conflict became the focus of dialogue on a new U.S.-South Asia strategy brought up by some U.S. congressmen, who said they were frustrated over Pakistan's alleged continued support to the Afghan Taliban, which they said led to the continuation of the war in Afghanistan. Although this alternative to the Obama administration SAF-PAC policy has generated some interest, its advocates clearly do not yet have broad support. In the 1980s the CIA, the Iraqi intelligence service, Pakistani Sunni extremist group Sipa-e Sahaba Pakistan, and the Mujahideen-e Khalq supported a Baluchi tribal uprising against Iran. A February 2011 article by Selig S. Harrison of the Center for International Policy called for supporting anti-Islamist forces along the southern Arabian Sea coast, including Baluch insurgents fighting for independence from Pakistan, as a means of weakening the rising tide of anti-American passion in Pakistan and heading off any alliance between Islamabad and Beijing a Euro-Pakistan having granted China access to a naval base at Gwadar. In the period 2003 to 2012, it is estimated that 8,000 people were abducted by Pakistani security forces in Balochistan. In 2008 alone, more than 1,100 Bullish people disappeared. There have also been reports of torture. An increasing number of bodies with burn marks, broken limbs, nails pulled out, and sometimes with holes drilled in their heads are being found on roadsides as the result of a kill and dump campaign conducted by Pakistani security forces particularly in Tur Services Intelligence and the Frontier Corps a Euro which, until the September 11, 01 World Trade Center attacks, had sided with the Afghan Taliban and Al-Qaeda against the Northern Alliance in Afghanistan.
A 2013 report from the Human Rights Commission of Pakistan identified ISI and Frontier Corps as the perpetrators for many disappearances, while noting a more cooperative stance from these agencies in recent years as perceived by local police forces. The Pakistan Rangers are also alleged to have committed a vast number of human rights violations in the region. No one has been held responsible for the crimes. Militant groups like lashkar e yahangvi have systematically targeted Shia Muslims in Balochistan, with about 600 being killed in attacks in recent years. About 800 non-Balish settlers and anti-Blabalokais have been killed by Balish militant groups since 2006. During a camp at Broken Chair, Geneva, Balish Republican Party leader Sher Baz Bugdi alleged that Balish youth, women and children were kept in torture cells. BRP Chief Braham Dak Bugdi called upon human rights organization, including the United Nations, to take steps to stop the alleged Balish genocide. In 2005, 32 Hindus were killed by firing from the government side near Nawab Akbar Bugdi's residence during bloody clashes between Bugdi tribesmen and paramilitary forces. The firing left the Hindu residential locality near Bugdi's residence badly hit. According to the Human Rights Commission of Pakistan and other independent national and international media sources, the efforts of Pakistan governmental agencies in countering Balish nationalism, as well as the activities of terrorist organizations such as lashkar i yahangvi and Pakistani Taliban, have produced a surge in religious extremism in Balochistan. Hindus, Shias and Zikris have been targeted, resulting in the migration of over 300,000 of them from Balochistan. There are more than 5,000 cases of forced disappearances in Balochistan. Many are innocent and stuck in Pakistan's slow court system whilst other are in prison awaiting charges on a range of things such as gun smuggling and robbery. The Chief Justice of an Apex Court of Pakistan asked about the situation and said it was going out of control in Balochistan. The Supreme Court is currently investigating the missing persons and issued an arrest warrant for the former military dictator Pervez Musharraf. Furthermore, the Chief Justice of the Court said the military must act under the government's direction and follow well-defined parameters set by the Constitution. In June 2011, the Prime Minister was informed that 41 missing people had returned to their homes, false cases against 38 had been withdrawn and several others had been traced. The PM urged police to trace the missing people and help them to return to their homes. The Supreme Court Apex Court headed by Justice Iqbal decided ordered the government to the grant of subsistence allowance to the affected families. Justice Iqbal advised families not to lose hope. He said the issue of missing persons had become a chronic problem and, therefore, the Commission of Inquiry on Enforced Disappearances, constituted on the orders of the Apex Court, should be made permanent. The government of Pakistan has repeatedly stated its intention to bring industrialization to Balochistan, and continues to claim that progress has been made by way of the Agazi Hakuki Balochistan package of political and economic reforms issued in 2009. This is challenged by Balish nationalist groups, who argue the benefits of these policies have not accrued to native Balish residents of the province. Balish nationalist groups continue to highlight the extraction of natural resources, especially natural gas, from the province, without discernible economic benefit to the Balish people. Nonetheless, the government of Pakistan continues to insist that industrial zones are planned along the new Gawadar, Karachi Highway. According to the government, this development is envisaged to bring accelerated progress in the future for the Balish.
In February 2006 three Chinese engineers assisting in the construction of a local cement factory were shot and killed in an attack on their automobile, while another 11 injured in a car bomb attack by Blatt. China recalled its engineers working on the project in Balochistan. The progress in the hydropower sector has been slow since then. The people of the region have largely maintained a nomadic lifestyle marked by poverty and illiteracy. The indigenous people are continuously threatened by war and other means of oppression, which have resulted in the loss of thousands of innocent lives over many years. Presently, according to Amnesty International, Baluch activists, Politicians and student leaders are among those that are being targeted in forced disappearances, abductions, arbitrary arrests and cases of torture and other ill-treatment. The chief minister of the province has said. A large number of professors, teachers, engineers, barbers and masons are leaving the province for fear of attacks. This inhuman act will push the Bullish nation at least one century back. The Bullish nation will never forgive whoever is involved in target killings. He said the government has approved three university campuses, three medical colleges and hospitals for Turbat, Mastung, Nasir Abbot and Lorala districts but there was shortage of teachers in the area. Rice traders from Punjab have also been killed in target killing, this has resulting in higher prices of foods items in Balochistan. Almost 40 people of non balashi ethnic groups were killed in 2009. Funding for Balochistan's annual development program in 2010 a Euro 11 was R27 billion as compared to R13 billion in 2007 a Euro 08. This allowed each member of the Provincial Assembly of Balochistan a personal development budget of 180 million for his or her constituency, with the figure increasing to 250 million in 2011 a Euro 2012. However, critics argue that development funding is not a fix for deep political issues and that MPAs have no incentive to find political solutions with the insurgents when they believe they will receive more funding as long as the insurgency continues. There have also been allegations that MPAs are exploiting the PSDP program to arrange kickback schemes and other forms of corruption. Four coal-fired power plants will be built Gadani creating a power corridor in Balochistan based on the Houston Energy Corridor. This was announced by Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif during a visit to the region. The Gadani Power Park and it is expected to generate 5,200 MW. Some nationalist groups objected to the project, saying they had not been consulted and instead favored expanding access to electricity in the province rather than increasing capacity. However, Nawaz Sharif's PMLN party is the largest party in the provincial assembly. The federal government announced it would transfer RS4 billion subsidy to provincial government to be passed on to farmers in Balochistan to promote for tube wells. The provincial government announced it would spend further RS3 billion to support the federal program. However, high levels of corruption amongst civil servants and senior ministers may mean the common man only gets partial benefit. In January 2011 then Chief of Army Staff of Pakistan Army, General Ashfaq Pervez Kayani, announced the establishment of Education City in Sui. The military said it had built colleges in Balochistan, such as Balochistan Institute of Technical Education and the Gwadar Institute of Technical Education with approximately 1,673 graduates. Around 22,786 Balush students attend military-run educational institutions. Gadani Energy Corridor Farm Subsidy Army Education City at Sui Notes B. 
Bibliography